Good afternoon. My name is Sean Galloway. Uh, today is December 9th, 2009, and I'm here with Mr. Charles Miller, uh, a native to Manchester, as he mentioned before we started rolling tape. And he's going to talk to us about his time growing up in the area. And also, um, you have a book there uh, talking about the bicentennial of Manchester, the celebration you guys had. Right. Uh, where'd you like to start, Mr. Miller? Wherever. Okay. I was born and raised out in Miller Station. Mm -hmm. uh, two miles east of Manchester on Dairy Farm and uh, went through school in Manchester and after school I joined the Army, stayed in the Army 24 years so I was missing for well, What What was years. your, what'd you, what'd you rank, were you an officer? I, uh, I was enlisted for seven and a half years mm -hmm. and did Korea and then after that I went to OCS and got a commission in the artillery. Mm -hmm. I was a captain in Vietnam and I retired as a lieutenant colonel in 1972. Mm. Went in 1947. Okay. Graduated from high school. Where'd you go to high school? Manchester. Manchester, okay. That's when they had 11 years of school. We were smart people. 11 years. We finished in 11 years. Yeah, and <laughs> now they need an extra year, right? <laughs> Maryland and Louisiana, I think, was two of the last states to go 12 year system. Really? Yeah. Huh. And um, w w what was it like uh, as, a, as a teenager? in Manchester? Well, we, uh, it was good as far as school was concerned, uh, but it was kind of during the war years, and when we were 10, 12 years old, we started working. Mm -hmm. I picked beans when I was, you know, 11 or 12, and then uh, later on when I got 14, I worked in the canning factory. I worked in Hampstead factory for a year. I worked in Lineborough factory. I planted tomatoes for the Melrose factory. They used to come and get me at noon at the school and go out in the afternoon and plant tomato plants because mm -hmm. all the men were gone, you know. Right. All the women were working down at Glenall Martins or the shipyards or somewhere. And the kids were just working around here on the farms. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, we grew up on a dairy farm. And uh, the year I graduated from high school, I joined the Army later that year. And then my dad bought electric milkers. Mm. Oh, so <laughs> we used to milk thirty-five cows a day. You had to milk them yourself. Yeah. Hey. yeah. <laughs> so you, soon it was over. You left. Yeah. You bought electric milkers. Yeah, you short one milker. <laughs> um, so uh, talk about what it was like on the farm. Give me a, give me the average day on the farm on a dairy farm for you. Well, uh, we planted peas in the spring. That was our our first pay crop, and uh, we had a, a close to a hundred acre farm dairy farm. My dad grew uh, peas, corn, wheat, uh, an acre of potatoes. We had plenty of potatoes uh, for the families and his brothers and sisters always came up from Baltimore to get their stuff on the weekends mm -hmm. uh, this during the war years. And uh, of course we had farm equipment. He had a couple of tractors so he had the gas stamps where you can get gas at right. time. Uh -huh. his, his friends and ball or brothers and sisters from Baltimore or from York uh -huh. would come, they'd fill up their car with gas before they go back. Uh -huh. Well, now uh, let, let's stop and explain that. I, I, I had an interview earlier with a lady that said that um, if you worked on the farm, you could get as much gas as you needed to run your farm. Yeah, that's right. But um, she also said that the average person only got about three gallons a week. He so, got a different, had different kinds of stamps. Uh -huh. R stamps, S stamps, T stamps, I believe. And depending on the type of stamp gave uh, you had was well, dependent on the number of gallon of gas you get, mm -hmm. but Dad had his own gas tank, and they just filled that. They up just as filled as it as up. He needed it. <laughs> okay, all right. So, so that worked out then. Yeah. For him and and the family and friends. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay. And I never saw any money pass hands. Oh, okay. I, I don't know if they paid him for it or what. But <laughs> they filled up their gas tank and then filled up the trunk with vegetables. Mm. Sounds. Sounds uh, all right. <laughs> we grew peas for the factory. Mm -hmm. We had a little pea viner right there on our farm. And uh, we cut the peas and hauled them down there and ran them through a machine. And uh, and they took the peas to the canning factories, uh -huh. uh, Hampstead or Melrose. And uh, we never grew beans, but all farmers around, a lot of farmers around Carroll County did. That was a cash crop for them. And that, uh, we kids uh, used to pick beans. Mm -hmm. My wife's uncle drove, the bean, drove a truck, steak bed truck. Mm -hmm. He'd put 20, 30 kids on the back of that truck, mm -hmm. turn us loose in a field of beans, 
And we pick that field in a day, fill up burlap sacks, haul them up to the scales, and they would weigh us. I think we started out about a penny and a half a pound. And I remember going on strike one time out at Limeboro for two cents a pound. Really? And we wouldn't go to pick beans until we got two cents a pound. <laughs> so uh, Carol Werheim was one of the owners of the factory. He came and says, you got your two cents, go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> and that was, a big, that was a big deal for you guys. Oh, it really then. was. Is I'd make like five hundred dollars during the summer buy my own school clothes. Really? And stuff. We made good money. Wow. At that in those days. Wow. That is that is some five hundred dollars a year was good money. Yeah, definitely. Back in uh, wartime. Definitely. So um, uh, when when let's let's fast forward to um, let's actually go back a little. Um, talk a bit about your about your parents. You talk, you mentioned a little bit about your father. Um, can you give me give me some stories? Get it so I get a good feel for him for your well, parents. Uh, my dad was eight years older than my mother, and I think she was 17 when they got married. Mm. They had 11 kids. Wow. I'm number eight out of the 11. And uh, by the time my oldest sister, by the time I was getting about that age, she was already gone and married, you know. So there wasn't all, always 11 of us at home. Mm -hmm. But there were seven girls and four boys, mm. and six of us are still living today. Oh, wow. Wow. Are they all close? Uh, most of them are. Uh -huh. uh, all my brothers and sisters are here in Carroll County now. Oh, okay. Except one's in Hanover. Okay. And That's not too far. No. Okay. But my oldest sister lived in Pikesville, and another sister lived up in Mariana, Pennsylvania. She married a coal miner. Mm -hmm. One of the guys from Manchester brought a friend home one weekend from Fort Belvoir, and they got together, got married, and so she went. He went back to the mines after the war, and she moved up there. Oh, and they got Mariana, married. Mariana, Pennsylvania. Mm. They're both expired now. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. Um, so so uh, let's, well, let's fast forward to you joining the Army. Um, what made you join the Army? Well, it was right after World War II, 1947. World War II was over in 46, and all these guys coming back, and I didn't have any money and just got out of high school. I didn't know what I wanted to do, really. I was a runt. I never made any of the ball teams, so uh, I had to wait till the fall to be 17 to join. Mm -hmm. My mother didn't want to sign, but uh, Dad said, "Well, I might as well sign. He's going to go anyhow." Mm -hmm. So I joined when I was 17 years old, and uh, went to Fort Jackson, South Carolina. They gave me a choice of going to Fort Dix or Fort Jackson, and I said, "Well, I'd rather go south. It's winter time." Mm -hmm. I joined in November. It went south. It was just as cold down there as it was in New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you know, Fort Dix is in New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I finished basic there. And then I got drafted into the band. Uh -huh. uh, I played trumpet in the high school orchestra and played with the Elysia Band, which is still going uh -huh. these days. So the four of us got pulled out of basic training one day, said, you're going over and get interviewed for the band. Well, I couldn't play three notes, I don't believe. They said, we'll take you. Uh -huh. And uh, so they took us four in the band that was being formed there at Fort Jackson. Now, so I stayed there two years in the band. Uh, and, so, and I imagine in those two years you got pretty good. Yeah. Uh -huh. We traveled all over the Carolinas and part of Georgia mm -hmm. uh, for ceremonies as they were putting up World War II monuments mm -hmm. all over the Carolinas. And we'd go live in people's homes or live in a National Guard armory. Mm -hmm. Did several of that, did that several times. And uh, so that was interesting. Did you serve with anybody from Carroll County? Uh, not really. I ran into a couple uh -huh. once in a while uh, from Carroll County. One of the boys, his mother's here today. Oh, really? Uh, when I was back at Fort Jackson Lake, later on, uh, I found out that this little Davidson boy was there taking basic training. So I found out where he was, and I went and got him on Thanksgiving Day. Took him out to my house for Thanksgiving dinner which was probably not a good time because Thanksgiving dinner in the Army is the best meal of the year. <laughs> <laughs> but he enjoyed it and then he told her about it. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. Now uh, let's talk a little bit about, uh, you were talking to me about a bicentennial uh, that Manchester had celebration and you want to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, you know, the 200 year bicentennial was in 1976 mm -hmm. and they had a committee in Manchester that uh, planned all the activities, and I was made parade chairman, which is 
why I'm interested in it, because we have one of the best parades in Carroll County. Mm -hmm. And uh, here's a little book that we put out with all the activities that was uh, happened that happened during that year. We had a Mrs. Manchester, Mrs. Katie Wentz from Lyme Burr was our queen. And uh, there's a little history in this pamphlet of uh, Manchester and Limeboro and Miller Station and the Manchester area. Then there's a whole page of, act of activities that we had during that year. Uh, it was things going on all year, but the weekend of June the 4th, 5th, and 6th, something was going on all, all the time. We had an open house. We had a, a ball, a dance. Uh, one was at the North Carroll Middle School and we had a band concert at the uh, uh, elementary school in Manchester. Uh, they had another, uh, Tony Gaiman's band, I think that was from Westminster. And then on June the 5th, they had the Bicentennial Museum at the Trinity Church. They had a lot of crafts, refreshments, guided tours, all throughout Manchester. And they had a flea market, steam show, antique cars at the carnival grounds. Uh, they had old-fashioned games, uh, grow, beard growing contest, and an AARP kitchen band. And at two o'clock that on the fourth or on the fifth, we had the parade, and uh, I was chairman for the parade. Mm -hmm. We had almost a hundred entries in the parade: antique cars, uh, bands. We had the mummers from Philadelphia. We had to pay for them which was a mistake because they really weren't that good. They just, <laughs> they marched up the street close together. I was used to seeing them spread out, uh -huh. but we paid them 1400 bucks to come down here and play for us. And what, what they were a band? Yeah, uh -huh. the Mummers. The Mummers are a band. Uh, it's, a, it's a band, and, uh, but it was a big draw, you know. Uh -huh. We drew some VIPs. We had a community course. It was people from 16 or 17 different churches mm -hmm. in, uh, Manchester area, and we sang several. It was called I Love America, or a cantata, and we sang that at several different places, schools, and in town. And they had a square dance that night. Uh, Leroy Boblitz, he had a dance hall down in Hampstead. He was the caller. Then on June the 6th, there was all kind of things going on. Uh, church services in the morning, of course, and uh, a band concert from the Myers' band in Westminster. That's when they judged the beard, guys that grew beards, uh -huh. and uh, dedicated the uh, uh, flower garden up at Christmas Tree Park. And uh, they kept that going for a number of years, but I think it's defunct now. But uh, that was a big weekend for Manchester. And what, what, what stands out to you the most about that, that weekend? Um, was it, was it a particular event in the parade, or was there something else that happened in that weekend? I think the chorus was one of the big things. Mm -hmm. Like it was, like I said, with people from 16 or 17 different churches, and a Marlene Cole uh, was the director, and it brought people in the, in the community together, had good crowds at every concert we did, and uh, it was just a good time. Uh, and the parade, of course, was the big thing. Reverend Slichter said it was the best parade he ever saw. Mm. Wasn't many fire engines in that parade. <laughs> we had antique cars and uh, horse, horseback riders, uh, the Conestoga wagon, uh, Steve Fisher. Mm -hmm. His wife was one of the co-chairs. And uh, we, I think he and I went to Annapolis to get, bring that wagon up here. We got permission to use it. And then after, the, after that weekend, uh, the Conestoga wagon went to Pennsylvania and it was part of the train that went went west, uh, reenacting that part. But Kathy Fisher and Peggy Collison were the co-chairs, mm -hmm. and uh, Reverend Schlichter was very much involved, Earl Yingling was involved, the mayor of Manchester was Phil Miller at that time, and uh, we dressed up in colonial outfits, many of us. Uh, well, there's a lot of stuff in this book, but uh, mostly it's of the parade. And Wayne Thomas was the official photographer, uh -huh. and all these are professional pictures. There's the Conestoga wagon, 
at the uh, you can get a shot of yeah, that. You can get a shot. Which one down there on the bottom? No, this one here. Oh, up top. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. That's the Conestoga wagon that we had in there. That was a big deal. Huh. Could you lean it back towards you a little? Yeah, there we go. Had a little glare there. Yeah, that's a good shot. Okay. Here's uh, some moonshiners. They had their moonshine jugs and their bib overalls. Uh, a lot of floats. The Carroll County Times had a float in the parade. Mm -hmm. uh, Carroll County Bank at that time, I guess it's BBT now. Uh, Statue of Liberty float. A lot of antique cars. There's a steam engine uh, coming up the street. Here's a guy, Mary Dell and his her husband, he's pulling a tractor, or she's driving the tractor and he's pulling the plow behind the tractor. <laughs> Get it? Yep. Had Abe Lincoln, uh, James O'Donnell, he dressed up as Abe, Abe Lincoln and uh, he went all over the county. I say it was horses. Here's the mummers. You can get a shot of them. They were good, but we were kind of disappointed the way they they marched. First thing they did when they came to town, they asked where do, where do we eat. We promised them a meal plus their fourteen hundred bucks. They wanted their meal tickets. Of course, we told them there was half a dozen places around town they could use them. Okay. Got them? Yep. Okay. First, uh, Charlotte Collette was the chairman of the whole thing, and she wrote a letter to get permission to close the street uh, for the parade for a couple hours, and the answer came back from Annapolis, no, they won't close the street. So I said to Charlotte, let me have that thing. So I took their letter and I wrote a letter, and their, their excuse was that there wasn't uh, access to the houses in case of an emergency, mm -hmm. couldn't get the fire companies or ambulances through. Well, I, I drew a couple maps, or I got a maps and color coded them, showed them where we had a street on both sides of Main Street that the emergency vehicles could get to, get to any house in town. Mm -hmm. Went back and asked them to reconsider it, and of course they did, and they approved it uh, based on that. So I told them Hampstead closes Main Street every year for their uh, carnival uh, firemen's parade, mm -hmm. and they don't have the side streets like we do. and. Uh, I showed them the bypasses that they could use, about 482, around 27 for through traffic, the truckers and so forth. That wasn't going to impede traffic that much. Mm -hmm. It was only for two hours. So we had a meeting with the state police. We got it all worked out. Everybody did a good job at that. All right. Yeah, it was very good, very interesting. <laughs> so uh, when, when you look back at um, how much has changed in the area, in Manchester, um, what stands out to you the most? Well, I can remember when there's a lot of dirt roads around that are now paved. Mm -hmm. Out Elysia, Miller Station, and out in uh, uh, north northwest of Manchester, Deep Run Road, there's a lot of dirt roads around. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, the houses just grew like uh, like mad. You know, we have, town has, has grown as far as I concerned. We had one doctor in town at that time. Now we have three or four, and uh, of course the hospital, I don't think Carroll County Hospital was even, it might have been, but it wasn't as big as it is now. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people in Manchester went to Hanover Hospital. Uh, I know we went to Hanover, to the dentist and, and uh, to the hospital when I was a kid. So, uh, but it's really, Manchester's really grown by leaps and bounds. Mm -hmm. Schools, we had one school for all 11 grades. Now we have two elementary schools, a middle school, and a brand new high school that opened up this year. Right, Manchester Valley. Manchester Valley. 
So it has really grown. Mm -hmm. um, do you think it's, it's uh, would you have rather it been like it was, or are you happy to see the change? Oh, I don't mind. Uh, it's grown fast enough. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's starting to, to you know, they're going to have to improve the uh, sewage facilities before long, sewage treatment plant, and water is always a problem. Most summers when it's dry, can't wash cars, can't wash your streets, wash anything outside, can't water your plants. So uh, water's a big problem mm -hmm. these days with all these new houses. Mm -hmm. Of course, we don't have a lot of industry in Manchester. We've got a lot of small businesses, but uh, most people go to Baltimore. Or, uh, we even got people commuting to Washington from Manchester mm -hmm. to work. And that's quite quite a ride, yeah, especially yeah. in these times with the gas and everything yeah. like that. That's two hours a day, one way in a car. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, it's really something. But if they want a good job and make good money, that's where they have to go. Mm. You got to go where the money is. Mm. Yeah. Well, Mr. Miller, do you have anything to add? Do you think we missed out on anything that you wanted to touch on? Not really. All right. <laughs> well, thank you for your time. It was wonderful talking to you, and uh, I appreciate you coming in to share your memories with us. Well, uh, thank you. Uh -huh. Enjoy doing it. All right. Thank I did something similar to this with uh, Congressman Barr.